Hey there, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and today I want to share this piece with you. It's sort of an article slash section, whatever you want to call it, for Unfair Maiden number 5, which is my per zine. I have not yet finished Unfair Maiden number 4, so I don't know what I'm doing working on number 5, but the inspiration just kind of struck me, and I took the opportunity to write this little section on something that I've been thinking about a lot in terms of um, zine making. And the title is, I want to make a zine someday. No offense, but why haven't you? And <laughs> I just feel like I wanted to share this with you and that um, I wanted to read this out loud because I feel like you guys will get it. <laughs> and and with any luck maybe this will encourage people to uh make make their first zine if it is something indeed that they have been intending to do so i'm just going to be doing this as a voiceover um and the uh visual component is just me cutting up pieces of the zine that i had you know i i write all the text first and then i cut it out you know cut out the individual paragraphs and then just arrange them on a colorful piece of paper and added a few de decorations. So that's what you're going to be seeing me doing is sort of arranging this section on paper while I read it out loud. I want to make a zine someday. No offense, but why haven't you? AKA, sometimes I hate navigating conversations. AKA, please just make a zine. Given that I make zines myself and that I work on my library zine collection, I end up hearing something along those lines all the time. I think any creator has probably heard something similar about whatever their medium is. You say that you like painting or photography or making zines, and someone goes, that's so cool, I've always wanted to try that. And I kind of hate that phrase, because what they really mean to say is, I've always wanted to try that, but something has held me back, and I'm not interested in trying to figure out what that is. The line is always a conversation ender, because there is no natural response to it, <laughs> no matter what I say after that, I end up against a wall, because they have become the subject of the conversation by saying, I've always wanted to try that, but they don't really want to talk about themselves or their relationship with X. I'm just going to refer to zine making from here on out, but it equally applies to any medium and probably any hobby. Pop quiz. <laughs> Quote, I've always wanted to try that, but something has held me back, and I'm not interested in trying to figure out what that is. What is the right response? A. How come? B. I really like it because... Or C. It's really fun. I hope you try it. Option A is tempting. Because everybody likes to talk about themselves, right? And why would they say that if they didn't want to talk about it? But it's a trap. Because whatever the real reason they haven't tried it out is, it's something that will be too personal to talk about with you. Very rarely will someone respond with, eh, the inspiration just hasn't struck me yet, or something equally casual that indicates they are comfortable with not having made a zine yet and confident that it will happen when they're ready. The thing holding them back might be as simple as being overwhelmed and busy, not feeling like they have the bandwidth to try a new activity. And you'd think there'd be no shame in that, but you forget that in capitalism, any moment that you're not maximizing your time and pushing towards some goal is wasted. So now, they've accidentally put themselves in the position of saying they have a goal, trying zine making, that they are not working towards, which, under capitalism, is a failure. You have reached the personal failure ending. The thing holding them back might be something more complex, like a lack of self-esteem. And I will call this the inner demons ending. This will come out as something like, I don't think it'd turn out good, I'm not really an artist, or even just, I'm not creative enough. If you reach this point, you have already lost, because nothing you can say will change their mind without serious digging that's not going to happen here in this conversation. You could say, since when does a zine have to be good? <laughs> or, you don't have to be an artist to make a zine. Or, that's ridiculous, you're super creative. But the best thing that you can say at this point is just to call it what it is. That sounds like negative self-talk to me. Unfortunately, no matter what, you're in deep now, and you're probably approaching therapist territory. Note that they may also say, I don't know what to make a zine about. 
Beware. They are not looking for brainstorm ideas, nor are they seeking encouragement. This is their attempt at ending the conversation before reaching the personal failure ending or the inner demons ending. So let's move on to option B, which was, I really like it because... This one is also tempting, and it's probably something that you can get away with among good friends who actually care about you. And if you're willing to take the risk, you can sometimes end up with an okay conversation, as long as you make things sound interesting enough to hold their attention. But in general, if they wanted to know what you liked about zine making, they would have asked. So following this path will typically get you short, meaningless responses like, that's nice, and the conversation will feel like being a teenager trying to talk to your parents while they're cooking. Or if you're one of those freaks who actually had parents that listened to you, then imagine a distant uncle or something. At some point, you'll sense that they are bored with you, and unless your, conversa- your, <laughs> unless your confidence is rock solid, you'll probably feel pretty lonely. So the correct answer, uh, the correct response, is option C, which is, it's really fun, I hope you try it. Yes, it's a conversation ender, because they will not invite you to share what you find fun about it. Again, if they cared, they would have done that from the start. And admittedly, it's a little unsatisfying, but at least it's a neutral ending that doesn't make them feel bad or make you look self-centered. I know (laughs) that if you analyze small talk enough, it's all going to sound ridiculous. I guess what feels frustrating in this instance is that I always get so excited I think, wow, this is a new zinester. Maybe we can swap ideas. Maybe I can share some photocopying tips. Maybe I can be the person who helps them break through that block and get their first zine to print. Until I remember, no, this is just small talk. They're just trying to be polite. In fact, there are probably some people who really have no interest in making a zine of their own, but are trying to express that they respect and enjoy zines as a medium. And to those people, (laughs) I'd like to encourage you to just say that. Because it opens up a whole realm of possibilities. I can now ask you what you like about them. What are some of the most memorable zines you've read? If you have any preferred genres. If you like the punk ethos, we can talk about punk bands and underground culture. If you like the DIY spirit, we can talk about other expressions of that spirit, from clothes mending to gardening. And heck, if you just like the aesthetic of zines, we can talk about aesthetics. But you can already see the difference. You have not shifted the conversation towards a subject that you don't actually want to talk about. I don't know. (laughs) I just miss the days when having one thing in common meant that you're best friends. And when I've always wanted to try that, turned into let's do that together. And this is the trap of small talk. I am always expecting it to turn into something more real. But you can't get that sense of connection with everyone. And so I just wish at least people would be more straightforward sometimes. Okay, now as for the people who really do want to make zines, and when they're saying, I want to make a zine someday, they're being sincere, then let me ask you in this zine, or in this case, in this recording, (laughs) since it's probably never going to be appropriate for me to ask in conversation, why haven't you? Really, I want you to ask yourself this question. Because this is how you'll be able to either, one, make it happen, or two, realize that you don't want to make it happen right now, which is totally fine. Seriously, if the answer ends up being, eh, I haven't felt like it yet, that's great. That is the best. And then, when you're talking with a zinester, you can say something like, I'm ready to pick up my sharpie and scissors when inspiration strikes me for my first zine. And then you can continue the conversation by asking about their zines, because it's only polite. But if that's not the reason, then you've got to figure out what is so that you can kick that reason's ass. I admit that I've been framing this whole thing in terms of something that annoys me, but really it's less annoyance and more frustration. I'm frustrated because it pains me to hear that someone feels unable to make a zine. I don't want anyone to be held back from something so enjoyable and liberating when they don't have to be. Especially when, unlike with many hobbies, the barrier to entry for zine making is non-existent. So here's a few reasons you might feel held back from zine making, and some reminders that those reasons are lying to you, and you do have the power to kick those barriers in the ass. Quote, I don't know what to write about. Here's a secret. That's not your real problem. 
Your real problem is that you don't think what you have to write about is worth putting into a zine. But a zine can literally be a to-do list, or crumpled receipts from the bottom of your bag, or pages from your diary, or photos from your phone that were too blurry to put onto Instagram. So zines don't require inspiration. Only the will to glue shit to paper and slap it on a photocopier. You know the great thing about zines. Their meaning is inherent to the medium. The medium contains all the meaning of being art, because by its very nature, it puts the power to say what is or isn't printable into your hands, and therefore allows for literally everything to be printable. A zine is worth existing because it's a zine, not because of the content. I could just give you a list of prompts, or you could Google one yourself, or you could take a prompt from the list above. But you don't need a prompt. You just need someone telling you to get the fuck over yourself and just do it. So, from me to you, with love, get the fuck over yourself and just do it. Quote, what if I don't like how it turns out? First off, I have some homework for you. Write down every single thing that would make you hate how your zine turned out. I guarantee that for everything you could possibly put on that list, there's a zine out there that's already done it. Because zines are pieces of shit. Every single one of them. Amazing, beautiful pieces of shit. But shit, shit, nonetheless. They are because book beauty standards come from the traditional publishing industry, and there is no way that something that isn't professionally arranged will ever be considered anything less than bad by that industry. So by making a zine, you've already failed because you haven't made something that was deemed worth a publisher's time. Ideas are always perfect in your head. It's the tragedy of the artist <laughs> that no matter what, physical representations will never be as good as how you imagine something to be in your head. They can't be. The material world is flawed in a way the idealistic world is not. So hard as it is, you have to try to divorce yourself from the image in your head because it's not real. It tries to trick you into thinking it is. And perhaps more than any other media, zines value what's finished infinitely more than ideas. I will leave you with that quote from Ratatouille. The average piece of junk is probably more meaningful than our criticism designating it so. Actually, you know what? I gotta say that as Anton Ego, okay? The average piece of junk is probably more meaningful than our criticism designating it so. And that includes your own pieces of junk and your own criticism. Quote, what if it's not good enough to share with other people? I mean, you can probably guess that I'm going to insist that zines are always good enough to share with other people because zines are worth sharing by nature. But I think your real problem is that either, one, you derive the worth of your work by how it's received, and or, two, you don't feel like you have anyone to share it with who would get it. Problem one is a big one, and even though I can tell you that your creations are worth it for the action, not the outcome, that is something that's hard to internalize. So, in the meantime, I have a solution for both problems. Share it with me. Seriously, if you want to share your zine with someone, share it with me. I don't care how ugly or amateurish or whatever it is you're worried about. I will be thrilled at the mere fact that there is another new zinester in the world. And I will share that genuine enthusiasm and encouragement and probably offer some zines for trade. And I will love your zine the way it deserves to be loved. Quote, but I don't know how to do it. Is that all? Why didn't you just say so? There is so much help for you. I can help you. I can answer your questions as best I can. I can point you to tutorials and books. There really isn't even anything that you have to learn. Probably the most complicated part of zine making is printing, but luckily shitty print jobs are part of the fun. And a zine usually ends up looking way cooler when the print job is shit. And like I said, I can help you. <laughs> So, if you're still hung up for whatever reason, if you have emailed me at 22zines at gmail.com and still feel stuck, if you need more structure, then here's what you're going to do. 
Step one, take two sheets of paper and fold them in half. Use cardstock if you have it so that it can hold up to ink. That is the big secret. Two, staple them together. You now have eight pages with plenty of room on each page. Three, put shit on the pages. If you don't know what, then make something about your cat. Cat's guaranteed winner. If you don't have a cat, get a cat. Four, rip the staples out. There's no need to be gentle here. Five, slap that greasy pig on your library's copy machine. Get the librarian's help. <laughs> we may not be the best with copy machines, but we are a persistent bunch. Six, give a copy to the librarian as a thank you. You now have your first reader. Seven, email me at 22zines at gmail.com. Once again, that's 22zines at gmail.com. You now have your second reader. Eight, rinse and repeat. Calm down. You can just draw on paper, photocopy it, and staple it together. That's all it has to be. So you're all better, right? You're going to go and make a zine now, right? If you're not, I guess I can't force you. But can you at least stop dangling the someday in front of my face? Stop saying, I'm going to make a zine someday because I am not strong enough. I can't stand when someone tells me that they could make a zine, but never will. And so I will never get to read it. I want to read your zines. Please do it for a sad Zine Hungry Boy. I hope that this has offered you some piece of encouragement, uh, tough love, maybe. And if you do make a zine, then please do share it with me at, once again, 22zines at gmail.com. Uh, thanks so much for letting me share this with you. I, uh, it was very therapeutic, very cathartic to uh, write all this stuff down, because it does honestly frustrate me sometimes when I hear people say, I want to make a zine someday. Because then, please, let that day be today, so that I may read your zine. Thank you. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.